everyone. I'm going to do something this week which I don't normally do, and that is get political. So no review this week, and this is going to be political in a way that is specifically relevant to the United States. Because in the U.S., net neutrality is at risk. So if you are outside the United States, this probably won't be very relevant for you. But if you want to stick around, that's cool too. So. The FCC is considering redoing the rules of how net neutrality works, or, or rather, how internet service providers are classified so that net neutrality is no longer a thing. The head of the FCC has basically said when he was brought on board, and when he was nominated for this position by Trump, that net neutrality was in his crosshairs. So... Currently, as of the time I'm recording this, the window, the first window for comment with the FCC is closed. There is supposed to be a second window for comment. When that window is open, go to FCC, go to gofccyourself.com. This is a website set up by John Oliver and his show, the people who run his show, to make it easy for you to get to the forum you need to comment. Please be nice, don't be a dick. Being a dick won't sway anyone to our side. In the meantime, before the opens, also... Because the term for the head of the FCC must be renewed at the end of this year, if his performance is such where he's not likely to get renewed, get re-upped, then he may change his mind and start backing up on the net neutrality thing. So, in the meantime, what you can also do is contact your senators and your representatives and let them know that this is an issue that is important to you. I will have links in the doobly-doo for where you can go to find your senator and your representative's contact information. Writing will probably not get there in time unless you spend the extra money for priority mail or, the, or next day mail or whatever. If you want to do that, cool, more power to you. Telephone calls will work well. Um, the flooded voicemail boxes and flooded phone lines that senators ran into and representatives ran into when it came to the health care bill certainly helped change people's minds on that, at least not to vote in favor of it. So doing the same thing here over net neutrality also means something. So the sites you need to go to, again, the actual URLs in link form will be in the doobly-doo in the show notes, but I'm going to say them out loud here if you feel like transcribing them or whatever. House.gov slash representatives slash find will help you find your representative. And Senate.gov slash senators slash contact will get you the get you your senators. So what should you say? First, think out your argument. And you want something that is both logical and impassioned. Impassioned arguments help sway people a lot. Personal arguments help sway people a lot. But being a dick about it and not having some facts just to say, oh, because, doesn't help people either. You want passion backed by facts. And so here's an example which I've been thinking of for the past few days, which I'm going to present to my representative. Because my senators include Ron Wyden, who is one of the most passionate defenders of net neutrality in the Senate. He has been spearheading this the fight to protect it for a very long time, and I am very, very glad I have Ron Wyden as my senator. But I also have Kurt Schrader as my representative, and he's less inclined to back net neutrality. So, here's the argument that comes up, I hear the most, against net neutrality. That net neutrality limits innovation and the spread of infrastructure by internet service providers because it takes away a potential revenue source. Because by tolling or sending charges to to websites and companies based on their traffic to either to raise money by getting them their traffic prioritized or by passing that those costs along to the consumer they will get more money to spread their infrastructure, to build more infrastructure, to hire more people to develop new technologies. Well, here's the thing. By doing these charges, by prioritizing certain providers over others based on how much they can afford to pay 
and its service providers, it makes it harder for new businesses to start up on the internet. I'm going to give two examples through streaming media. One related to user streamed content, and the other related to not just not live streaming, but more streaming on demand. So, I stream my video game streams, my Mass Effect Andromeda let, uh, Let's Play series, and before that, several other series, I believe um, Mass Effect 3, I think I also did a multi yeah, did a restream for Lost Planet 2, through th 3, and then later 4 different sites. YouTube, Twitch.tv, Beam, and Hitbox, which is now Smashcast. They've rebranded themselves and merged a couple services together. So, of those four services, three of them, Twitch, YouTube, Beam, are backed by, ma by major companies, some of the biggest companies in the world, for that matter. YouTube, owned by Google. Google has a lot of money that they can put into keeping its, of uh, building its uh, network infrastructure, and should net neutrality go away, they have the money to spend to push people, um, to, to get their pro traffic prioritized. They may pass this along to consumers through Twitch Prime or similar services, but they have the money to spend for, for uh, YouTube. Um, which owned by Amazon. Same thing. Amazon, big company, a lot of money to spend. They've got a lot of money going with their network infrastructure services. It is in their best interest to make sure that their traffic moves smoothly, not just for them, but for other companies who are using their infrastructure. They can possibly pass it along to the consumers by raising the rates to use their API, to use their big data and cloud computing services. But they have, but they have the money to do that. Beam, run by Microsoft. I'm sorry, Beam run by Microsoft. YouTube run by Google, yeah. Beam is run by Microsoft. It is the newest of these companies that are around, but it also has, again, probably some of the most money on the internet or of major tech companies to go towards this because not only does, Beam, does Microsoft able to leverage its operating system market and its console market, but also the fact is it has its own cloud computing services, its Azure platform, that it can leverage that towards the Beam technology and for people who are spending money to, for corporations, that sort of thing, to use the Azure cloud computing platform for their business. And that provides a perfect revenue sources for to allow... Microsoft to soak any additional cost that comes from the from any charges that they have to pay to ISPs to make sure that their usage of ISPs pipes doesn't get the standard substandard connection. And then there's Hitbox slash mass class slash whatever. Hitbox doesn't necessarily have the big corporate backing and the big corporate money coming with it that Beam and YouTube and Twitch has going for it. And so they will be hurt more. They can't soak the cost of having to pay that extra so that their traffic is not penalized because they didn't pay the Dane Geld. They didn't pay their tribute to the ISPs. And it's not just going to be one ISP that's going to be doing this. If Comcast does it and they can get the money for doing this, then other ISPs are going to do this too. Because it's a source of money and they need to raise their profits, but if they're publicly traded ISPs, to satisfy their shareholders. So if Comcast does it, and Warner will do it. Verizon will do it. Frontier will do it. So there's that. And so it'll be harder for newer companies or companies without big backing to compete in the case of the uh, live streaming platforms. This will penalize Hitbox, Smashcast, 
because Smashcast cannot necessarily afford to pay the fees to ISPs for this to have their traffic prioritized. Thus, the quality of the video that they'll be serving will end up being lower, be it lower resolution, lower frame rates, or a combination thereof. And when it comes to streaming gameplay, people want their 1080p. People want their 780p. If they can get it, people want their 4K. So there's that side of the coin. And then there's video on demand. The big dog on dog in the house, dog in the yard, what have you, is YouTube. And this is a dilemma that has been going on for quite some time. Is YouTube is the biggest video hosting provider on the internet. If you want your video to be seen, if you want to build an audience, so that, for example, if you're doing video on demand like I do, if you're, you're doing video internet, independent internet video production like I am, you have to go through YouTube, at least at some point. There have been competing services, but if you want to make money at this, your options are limited. Once upon a time, there was Blip. Blip went away. They, their money that they're able to bring in started going down. They got bought out by Maker and shut down. There's Daily Motion. Daily Motion is not great at providing monetization options, and the op choices for discovery are not great. And of all of these video hosting provides, providers that are out there, YouTube has the big backing of Google and has enough of a market of an audience that is actively wanting to watch it and actively watching it that they, that Google is in their interests to spend the money to have their traffic prioritized. And it is in the interest of ISPs to cut a deal with Google. So either they're not getting charged for the data prioritization or if they are getting charged, it's at a Google's getting charged less. They're getting a special sweetheart deal because Google's the big dog. What about the other com companies? Anyone who wants to compete with Google on this front, wants to compete with YouTube, if they want to compete, then there's the question of forking over the money. Vimeo is known for short form, really high quality video content. They were doing HD streaming video before Google was. was. And running it, and while they're smaller, they're using less traffic, they may get billed less on that front. They'll, they'd still be getting billed. And so they either up the amount that the paid memberships have to pay in order to put their video, you get the HD video and to post more videos per month and that sort of thing. Or they start lowering their video quality. This is perhaps even a bigger deal for one of the newer companies on the block, vid.me. Because vid.me doesn't do monetization via ads, and they also don't do a pay subscriber package, at least at this point, in order to get a expanded subscription base or to put to get more storage options and to post more videos at higher definitions and that sort of thing. They may have, or at least they didn't when I signed up, they may have instituted that now. But in any case, for vid.me, if they want to with YouTube, they have to be able to serve comparable video quality. And particularly if they're not doing ad-supported, or not able to do ad-supported, then that means they need to start charging video producers in order to have their content hosted. Or they start scaling down the video that the qualities of the video they're serving or they for their donation options or subscription options because vid that me is set up for how they make their money is you pledge money to subscribers as a tip to video producers as a tip if you like a particular video or you can subscribe to to channels for like a weekly or monthly fee and Bid.me would then start taking a larger cut of that and passing less of that on to video producers, which gives the video producers less incentive to stick with Bid.me. So it hurts competition. It hurts new businesses that are trying to start up on the internet and trying to serve content over the internet. 
because they are now in a situation where an independent company, a smaller company, now has to deal with the fact that the bigger companies who've been around longer not only have an advantage in terms of advanced market of market share and brand recognition, because that's the standard thing that's been around forever, but they but the larger companies have the competitive have the unfair competitive advantage of improved access to the internet. To make the freeway analogy, it would be like if trucking companies were able to pay to get access to faster lanes of the freeway. If, or if Uber or Lyft were able to pay money to get act so that their drivers, and only their drivers, would have access to faster lanes of the freeway or faster lanes of roads, it would shut out other companies would be trying to use the lanes. It would shut out the uh, any smaller cab independent cabbing co um, cab companies which are trying to serve customers, and it hurts the regular user because hell, if vid.me's traffic is getting thought throttled, what about your blog? What about your personal website? What if you're an artist? who is trying to put out your portfolio on the internet and not go through a major art hosting site like DeviantArt, like Pixiv, or whatever. Your site will load slower than the big sites will. So you'll have to put... So if you are trying to present your portfolio to possible clients, to get possible art jobs, or to get commissions, you'll have to go put your catalog, to put your portfolio on Pixiv, on DeviantArt, if you want your art to be visible the way you want to see it. If you, as a video producer, want your portfolio to be visible the way you want to see it, if you want to get a video production job, if you want to get commissioned work beyond just doing your show, or if you want to make a living doing your show. So... Yes, the internet may no longer be the Wild West that it used to be. And to a certain degree, that's fine. But the question then becomes, how do we prevent, how do we handle this transition from the Wild West to something more structured, but which still allows for competition, but still allows for independent people, artists, creators, to have room to create and make a living doing it. Or for new companies to start up, new businesses to start up, and be able to succeed on their own without being shut out or forced out by larger corporations. And net neutrality helps do that. It helps create it helps make sure everyone is playing on an even playing field. Yes, some people have advantages than others, just bigger advantages than others. The same way that certain basketball players have a their own built-in advantages. They're, they're taller and they have a longer reach and that sort of thing. You can, But there's still room for people who are shorter, faster, or even slower to get that edge depending on how they use the attributes and the abilities they have at their disposal. And that's the rub. Net neutrality, I'm repeating myself, but this is for a reason, it's for emphasis. It levels the playing field. It makes things open for everyone, so that no one really gets shut out and everyone has a chance to take their shot. Without net neutrality, people can't take their shot. Aspiring businesses, aspiring entrepreneurs cannot take their shot. Aspiring artists cannot take their shot. So, those are my thoughts on net neutrality and why it's important. There are, feel free to use my words to rephrase them how you see fit when you are presenting your argument in defense of net neutrality to your senator, to your representative, and to the FCC. And share this with your friends. Share John Oliver's videos with your friends. I will put the links to Oliver's videos about net neutrality in the show notes. Thank you very much for watching. 
Next week, we will be back to the usual stuff, and we will be having the anime video that I had had scheduled for this week, as far as the review, on the first Wednesday of April. And there'll be a review of Armored Trooper Votoms. Then, I think it was Votoms. It'll be something. There will be a review that week. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something particularly you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.